The text says the early saints devoted themselves. Devoted means that they made it their business to be anywhere where the word was going forth. Yeah. Not only that, they made it their business to get there whether they felt like it or not. The text says they devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine. Yeah. Yeah. Now I know in our modern hearing, we understand that to be the Bible. And surely, I said surely, yeah. no other book can boast of so vividly capturing the heart of God Amen. like the Bible. Amen. And surely there is no other road map that can guarantee and say that no one who's ever followed its instruction has ever been lost except for the Bible. Amen. But beloved, I have you to know that Luke here in the scripture of Acts ain't talking about the Bible. You see, Luke pens this book, thank you, Dick, around the year of 60 AD. Now, 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 the Bible, as we know and understand it, we did not get until at the earliest 143 AD, some two centuries later. This, 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 this apostle's doctrine that, that we speak of was not the Bible. For the Bible that we have today, we didn't get until the third century because of a maniac by the name of Marcion with his heretical teaching that negated the God of the Old Testament. We, we didn't have a Bible. What Luke is telling us here is the word doctrine means teaching. Yeah. And here it is. What Luke is saying is if we're going to be located in the word of God, we've got to devote ourselves to what is explicitly expressed from the mouth of the pulpit. Come on, I know y'all don't like that today. But the Bible says that the word of God is the preached and taught word of God. Now I know that ain't popular and y'all don't like that. I know, I know. But I got some Bible on my side. Let me tag in Paul to be my tag team partner. Tag Paul says in 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians 2 and 13 that I thank God that when you accepted God's word that you heard from us, you welcomed it for what it truly is. Instead of accepting it as a human message, you accepted it as God's message. And continues to work in you who are believers. I, I wish I could pause there for a moment and tell you if, if you accept the word, it works in you, but when you reject it, it actually works against you. Y'all you, don't believe me? I, the book says that all things work together for the good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. The inverse is if you don't love the Lord, everything is working not for your good, but against you. In other words, doctrine does not just appear on the pages of this sacred book, but it also appears in the pulpit teaching and preaching of the biblically based pastor. I wish I had time to stay there just a little while longer. But suffice me to quote the writer of Hebrews who says, on the day you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Church location is everything. And Luke suggests we are located in the company of God by hearing and heeding the word of God. But, but not only that, but look closely at the text. Luke suggests that we ought to be located in God by being with the people of God. Okay. Now the word here used is koinia. That word means fellowship and mutual partaking and sharing. He, he says they devoted themselves to the community. Then he goes on to talk about to the breaking of bread. Now we understand that to be the ritual of the Lord's Supper and that's fine and dandy, but that's not what Luke's really talking about. 
Here's the proof. If you scroll down about four more verses, what Luke has happened, he was so nice, he had to say it twice. And he goes back and says, and they went from house to house and broke bread. What is Luke saying to us? Luke says this. He says, if you want to be located in God, you literally locate yourself in God by sharing with others. This is what fellowship is all about. I know I ain't going to get no way man's here. That's all right. right. Fellowship is not 4 p.m. services. Come on, sir. Thank you, D. By the believer's ability and their activity of giving up what they had for somebody who did not have it. That's That's what God expects and demands from us. Oh, I know, I know that's different. I know that's different from what we hear today. This idea of supernatural concern, supernatural sharing, supernatural love, I, that, that's different for us today. I, I, that's, that's some extravagant generosity. That's some risk-taking mission. That, that's a radical thought for us today. I, I know we like to sing about giving ourselves away. Oh, I know I get all of you, Jesus. Here I am, take me. While that might sound good on your prime dates ears, God ain't concerned with that. Let me help you out here. God is more concerned and more interested or not in whether you give your stuff away. I know it ain't no amens today. But, but here, let me help you and move on really fast here. If, if, let me ask you one question here. What does it profit? This is for all the stingy so-called saints. What good is it? What, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and then lose your soul? What, what good is it to hold on to all that you have and lose eternity? What, what good is it to, 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 to have a, a currency at the expense of eternity? Yeah. Location. Being located with God is everything. In our text, we see Luke's understanding of the last way to be located in God. Look, look at the text. He says very simply that the saints found themselves in God by praying to God. Prayer is simply talking to God. Yeah, that's all it is. But there's no formulas for it. I know, I know we got some folk here and some folk around and you've seen them around that, that know how to show their praying. And folk get all excited when they pray. We ought to quit that mess. And I ain't in the sanctuary. Ooh, I felt the whole you ain't felt nothing. There, there's no particular formula into praying, say the Lord's prayer. But you ain't got to start no prayer. Shit, you, you, y'all, y'all, maybe y'all don't do it like they did when I was a little boy. They, they, the deacons, we got cool deacons. When I was a little boy, the deacon would get up to pray and shake everybody's hand, turn the chair around, get down on one knee. Father God, in the name of Jesus, which be once more again, your humble servant, by the bent knee, bent by the bent, I'm up before you, Lord God. I won't thank you for last night's way to die. I won't thank you for this other one, this other one. Lord, you've been a good God for us. You washed over, flipped over us now. Then they get to the part where they send God all over town. Now, Lord, I want you to go by the hospital. And Lord, I want you to go by here and touch there and do this, do that. And that's not prayer. All right. All right. Real prayer is real communication and talking to God. Yeah. Yeah. Don't talk to God in a way you don't talk. How you gonna build a relationship with God when you don't even bring yourself to the relationship? Let me pause and help you. How you gonna build a relationship with any entity if you can't be yourself? Right. Right. Not for the reason why churches don't grow like they 
they should is because the fellowship is absent. And the reason the fellowship is absent is because we don't bring ourselves to the party. You nobody want to hang out with the fake you. It's talking to God. Yeah. And can I tell you something? Don't nothing build a relationship. Nothing builds a friendship better than just talking. You see, communication is absolutely essential to friendship. The scripture asks the question, how can two people walk together unless they first agree? Agreement comes through conversation and dialogue. And if we want to walk with God, as a church, we've got to learn how to locate ourselves with God in prayer. Instead of talking about each other, yeah, we ought to learn how to pray. Instead of fussing with each other, we ought to learn how to pray. Instead of fussing and complaining and nagging about what you don't see, want to see, or think you ought to see, he here the text says you ought to learn how to pray. <laughs> Beloved, we've got to come to the place where we make a habit out of talking to God. Yes. I don't know how you feel about it, but I enjoy talking to God. I was on the plane yesterday on my way back and I noticed how accustomed I am to flying now. I don't even listen to the stewardess when they come on. For those of you all who are not accustomed to flight, before the plane takes off, the stewardess gets up and gives you emergency information. Mm -hmm. They tell you to make sure that your seatbelt is on the right way. They tell you what to do when the plane should crash. They tell you where the emergency exits are, how to get off the plane. They tell you about the lights in the plane. They tell you that your seat you're sitting on can become a flotation device if it needs to be. They tell you where the oxygen masks are. They, they tell you what to do when something happens. And as I was sitting there, I am tuning that lady out, not paying her no attention, making my last Facebook post before they told me to turn my phone off. Something spoke to me and said, Napoleon, you're so used to flying on these airplanes that you don't even pay attention to the information that can save your life. Before the crash came. 